Welcome back and thank you for coming today. We're going to be working on rounding some more. So get your things and we'll get started. that I have prepared for us. And I want you to take a look at my numbers, pause the video, and at home, talk about what order we would put these numbers in if we wanted to start with the smallest and build to the largest. Welcome back. When you talked about putting these numbers in order from the smallest to largest, did you see that 350 was the smallest and that 5,003 was the largest? Notice how many of the digits in my number are the same, threes, fives, and zeros, but we have to take a look at the value column in each to determine which is the smallest and largest. And of course, here we're only working in the hundreds, for this number, we get into the thousands, which is the same as the blue and the purple number. So we look to the next value column. We've got zero hundreds, zero hundreds, but here we have five hundreds. So we know this is larger than these two. And then again, we'll look to the tens, zero tens, but here we have five tens. That's why that's the next larger. And of course, in this case, we have the thousands column, which is larger. And so that makes our 5,003 the largest number of all. So that's just a little warm up you can do to be thinking about um, numbers and their different value columns. Okay, so let's talk. You know so much now about rounding. You can round to the tens. You can round to the hundreds. Today, we're going to round to the thousands. Isn't that exciting? Um, why don't we start with a number chart to help us think about our numbers? And on my desk, I'm gonna draw the thousands. Um, if we work with the number chart where we, are, where we have the thousands, then our size is smaller. So I like to keep it about this size and um, I'm just going to write the digits in here for 1,000s. Alrighty, let's start looking at some numbers. Let's say 248. Do you remember that number from yesterday? We'll check our hundreds column, look next door to the tens, and that lets us know, because this is not five or higher, that this number, the digit stays the same, the number rounds down to 200. But now let's get into the thousands and add a 3,000 here. And let's say this time we want to round to the nearest thousand. So let's underline in our thousands column, draw our arrow that reminds us to look next door to our hundreds column for the information we need. Do we have five or greater? We don't. It's four or below. So we know that means that this digit will stay the same and our number rounds down to 3,000. Do you see how we have zero ones, zero tens, and zero hundreds when we round our 3,248 to 3,000? So the technique that you're going to be using today is exactly the same. Let's play a little game. I'm gonna teach you the game first, looking at rounding to the hundreds, and then we'll go into the thousands, okay? In my deck of cards, I'm just taking out all the face cards and the tens. There we go. Do you have a deck of cards that you really love at home, a pair that has like a, picture on it of something special. I used to have these cards that had a little owl. You know how much I love owls? For us today, I just have my blue cards, but all we're going to do, and it's probably more fun to do it with a partner, is turn over three cards. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now, 
I'm going to, in my mind, underline here, and in my mind, point my arrow next door. I went around to the nearest hundred. Two is below five, so I know that this number is going to round. 226 rounds to 200. All right, are you ready to get into the thousands? I knew it! So, let's get into the thousands. <clears throat> now, if I were playing with a partner, we could decide whether we wanted the number to be the largest number possible or the lowest number possible, and we could, you know, save the cards or something like that. Okay, but we're working in our thousands. Let's work with our place value chart. I think that will help us out a lot. So I'm gonna say that the first card I turn over goes in my thousands column, hundreds, tens, and ones. Now, if I went around to the nearest thousands, I look next door. Oh, I've got a four which is lower than five. So I'm going to say I have the number 3,434, which we have rounded to 3,000. Great, so now we've got zeros in the hundreds, tens, and ones column. Let's try again. Okay, let's see what we get this time. Oh my goodness, all right. We're in the thousands column. We want to round, so we're gonna look next door, and in my hundreds column, what do I see? I've got a five, so what does that five tell me? I've gotta round up, don't I? Um, I I'm, was trying to make a little stack of numbers here, but let's just go to the side. 8,546. That is going to round up to 9,000. So that's just a little way you can explore and practice with that today. Now let's go back to um, something that we talked about yesterday, which was, we said, hey, well, if, I have, if I'm estimating I have 400 plus 400, and that gives me 800. Well, what if I want to round that to the nearest thousand? What do we do in that case? I don't have anything in my thousands column. I still go to this number and I say, well, is 800 closer to 1,000 or is it closer to zero? In this case, it's a lot closer to 1,000. So we can, we can round 800 if we're looking for getting to the nearest thousands, we could round it to 1,000. So it's eight, you know, if there were 800 people at a football game, we could say there was almost 1,000 people at the game. So let's finish today with using the number line strategy also, which really I just love. <clears throat> so if I have a number like 4,800 and I want to round it to the nearest 100, I can find out where on my number line I should put it. So remember, let's think about what the hash marks on our number line mean. If I have 4,000 here and 4,500 there, can you figure out what each mark might mean? There's one, two, three, four, and then here we are five. Yeah, they each stand for 100. So 4,100, 4,200, and so on. But we want to find 4,800. So we can, we could start from the beginning, but I can also come here and say 4,500, 4,600, 4,700, 4,800. Let's put it on our um, number line. All right. Then, remember this strategy, we get to say, all right, if I went around to the nearest thousand, am I closer to 5,000 or closer to 4,000? And we can easily visually see that we're near to 5,000. So we would round 4,800 up to 5,000. Okay, let's just take a look at one more here. Okay, let's take a look at this number, 7,455. Again, we're checking our little hash marks and they still are, um, we can see because it's so similar to the top number line that we're still talking about hundreds. 7,100, 200, 300, 400, 7,500, and so on. So how would we determine where to put the number 7,455 yeah, we could think about, well, where's 7,400, which would be here? 100, 200, 300, 400. So somewhere between 7,400 and 7,500, we would find our 
7,455, somewhere right around there. And now again, we're just going to ask, are we closer to 7,000 or closer to 8,000? We haven't crossed over this 500 mark, so we're going that direction. We're closer to 7,000. And that's how we can use that number line. Okay, you'll be doing some work just like that in your book today. Isn't it so much fun to get into the thousands? Be looking for numbers all around you in the thousands. And when you see them, just say to your teacher, hey, I can round this up or I can round that down. Because the more we practice, the better we get at these things. All right, can't wait to see.